So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another album review of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today we're going to talk about a progressive symphonic rock band called Chasing Sinners. And the album is called Epochs Changing. And as you can see, I received the album from the band, which I also interviewed on the channel. So this is an album that has 10 tracks. It's over an hour in left length, but there's five tracks that have been already being released, uh, which are the singles. So you can get like an idea of what the band sounds like. So if you like your progressive rock, uh, especially bands like Dream Theater and Devin Townsend Project, I think you will enjoy this. Uh, this album, there's 10 tracks and one of the tracks is an instrumental, which opens the album. And there's a lot of like guest vocalist on this project. So this is a debut record and this is the brainchild of uh, one person in particular. His name is Carl Kearney. So Carl uh, basically came up with the idea of this record. He's from uh, Washington State. Uh, he graduated early high school when he was 15 and he traveled the world different places in Europe, and he made friends with a lot of musicians. So Epochs Changing is really an album about his life. Every song goes through what he's been through, his struggles, and how to get to where he is now. But it is a very uplifting record, both musically and in the lyrics. Uh, which is something that, you know, it's a fresh of breath air in these times where there's a lot of records that are like all negative all the time. So having that, it's you, it's something different. Musically, uh, there's a lot of like uh, progressive elements that they do, you know, some great uh, guitar solos to it. There's some synths, there's some piano, uh, there's some electronic elements that they use in some parts of the songs. And Every you know, there's clean vocals. You know, there's a lot of singing on this record. This this is not a record that is like harsh in nature. Uh, even though that doesn't mean it's soft. You know, there's some great shredding at parts, but it has that more like symphonic element, uh, like Dream Theater has, uh, which is very uh, much a part of this record. So uh, the singles that they put out are a great representation of the band. So. This uh, album starts with the Epochs Changing, which is the instrumental. And that instrumental really sets the mood of what you're going to listen to. It feels very like ethereal at times. Uh, there's some electronic tinge elements to it. And it really prepares you for the first track that is Last Abscess. And that uh, features two guest vocalists, Lauren Hart and Anna Murphy. And that one is more a more aggressive tune uh, it's more faster paced, but I think it's a great way to start the record since, uh, you know, uh, Carl is going through his life, you know, it starts like with that rebellion uh, that you first have when you're younger. Uh, then uh, the track None and the Same, this features Marco Pastorino, and that one has like some power metal elements to it, especially in Marco's vocals. Uh, and it's good because, you know, Carl also sings, but having this guest vocalist keeps the, some songs like a little bit of like different flavors at times, which is good. Uh, there's, there's a few songs with Charlotte Wessels. You may know her. She used to sing with the band Belaine. So you have Slipstream. You have uh, Ever Shall We Roam, which is the two tracks that she's on. And Slipstream is one of the singles. And that just feels like a very welcoming song. Uh, Charlotte Wessel's vocals on it uh, shine really a lot. And that's a song where she's front of the vocals and the song. It's it's more her song. And uh, Carl takes a back seat on that one. Uh, it sounds a lot like it reminds me of the band that she was in, Delane. Again, great vocals to that one. And since I got the lyrics, I can read some of the vocals. So. Let me get the vocals for that track, which I thought was one of the more uplifting tracks. So it starts like fast times in the winds of freedom, swept up in the breeze, high tide, 
drowning inhalation, lost uh, way out at sea. So it's like they're using metaphors of the sea, of like uh, having like struggles in your mind. Uh, and because, you know, then they go like at the end of the pier, they lie whispering. As my eyes drink of the world, I discover if the moment's eruption, distress tingling, a conversation do. So the lyrics on this album, you know, they're pretty interesting. Uh, and I think they paint like a vivid picture of what they're trying to convey of like, uh, like changing, like, like how change comes sometimes from within. So that's a great one. Uh, another track that I think it's a standout track and it's almost like a 10 minute epic is Midnight Roses, which is uh, more of a love song. And that uh, has Vicky Pasar Pasaraki, sorry if I butchered that, and Carl Kearney on vocal duties. And I think it really works because it's like a like a love song of two lovers torn apart and they send you they send each other midnight roses. So uh it's pretty it's pretty good because there's a part that says, I know the pain you're living in. Too strong to fade, waiting for a stop, begin again, the end in sight, too young to die. So it's like uh it's very like uh like a it's kind of like a like a breakup song of two lovers like in the distance and yearning for each other. So that with the Midnight Roses and that song has a lot of piano in it. And it's it's instead of a power ballad, it's a prog ballad, people. And it, it really works with the pacing. You never get bored in track. And I think I like the duality of the vocals because it's really like, a, uh, I don't hear that enough nowadays. Like, you know, like, uh, I, I remember when Meatloaf did I Would Do Anything For Love and you had that duet thing and it's very theatrical. This is a song that I would hear like in a theater play and I think it wouldn't sound out of place. But I think something that is great here is like, uh, I like when the songs only feature Carl in the vocals because like he's got a great, he's got a good voice. And sometimes like with so many guest stars, uh, it, you know, you what you know you want to hear Carl up front in the song, and a uh, great uh, there's two songs that feature him, Al uh, only Albatross and Yesterday's Outsider. Yesterday's Outsider is one of the singles. Albatross is not, but Albatross uses a lot of like metaphors of you know like the bird, the albatross, which I think is pretty great. And uh, I, I'm going to read uh, a line from the song. So it says, like, fly in unpainted skies, closer to the sun. Like the albatross, keep holding on. You'll survive and sublime. Time keeps moving in circles of fright, like how wishes stir the nostrils we breathe, all in doubt, just like knowing. So very introspective lyrics. And I, I like the way that, the, that Carl uses metaphors in these songs, which I think work to its advantage. Uh, my favorite tracks on the record, uh, I like the longer tracks, like on on More Amnesia, which uh, uh, features Vicky Pasarakis on vocals. That one is a more aggressive tune in nature uh, and really uh, in your face most of the time. But again, some great guitar uh, solos throughout the, the song. And there's parts here where they take it slower and you get more to breathe. And the songs work a lot with pacing, which is very important in progressive rock. Uh, Yesterday's Outsider, I think it's a very, <clears throat> it's a track about like looking at yourself in the past and like feeling like, or, or like feeling like an outsider where you live in and not knowing where you belong. So uh, I think it's a very relatable song. And again, uh, there's uh, there's some lyrics which I really uh, like. Uh, let me read some. It's always a different story. Set the needle to us. Hand of static at your door. Reason sells on the cost. Through ever we turn. So am I a broken record or just a little misread? Yearning for the sun to wake again. 
sore eye, tantalizing patient falling. So it's really an introspective type of song. Uh, I'm analyzing the lyrics, Carl. So please uh, do, do, do not get mad if I get something wrong. Hmm. And the last track on the record, Pathfinder, is an epic 10 minute and 26 second song. And that song does, they do everything that the band does on that song, you know, it features Emily Abner, Brief, Christensen, and Anna Murphy. So it has a lot of like guest vocalists. And Carl is on that song again. And it has like a spoken word, like in the middle of the track, where the music slows down. And it's got like that really like that type of music that's supposed to so soothe you. And that's something that uh, Chasing Cynics do in this album. It's pretty soothing music at times. And it's progressive rock that it's meant to like uh i think inspire and and like i said it's all positive in the lyrics so uh i want to read to you this is the note uh that i got sent so hector thanks for the interview let's keep in touch and live brightly so yeah what you cannot take away from this album is that this is a band that it's a they bring positive messages to their music and this is a very introspective and personal record for Carl. It's all about his journey from being a teenager to a man and doing it in a way that it's not about like uh, like booze, drugs, or sex. You know, it's introspective and very beautiful. The music on this album is very beautiful at times. So if you like progressive rock with symphonic elements, you would like this. So... My only nitpick for this record is that although I like that it has some guest vocalists, sometimes I think having so much guest vocalists can take away from the main writer, Carl. And very important to say, Carl is the main writer here. He's the composer. He writes all the music. So basically, this is his baby. And he also uh, did recorded this himself. So a uh, very impressive debut for Chasing Cynics. So. If you want to know more about this band, I actually interviewed Carl on the channel uh, and we talk all about this album. Uh, here I'm going to, it's like an unboxing. Here's the CD and here's the booklet. Uh, it has pictures. Like you see, it has something very important. Uh, who's uh, photos of everyone who's on this uh, record and people, lyrics. Yes, it has lyrics. Lyrics are important. Uh, so uh, you see pictures here of everyone who's a part of this project. So I think it's a very ambitious project for being a debut record. And I want to see where the band goes from here, because I think it's a very promising progressive rock band. Here we go. And, and this is the back with the songs. So I want to thank Carl for sending me the CD. Uh, much appreciated. That's something that I really, you know, sometimes you interview bands and uh, it's awesome to get some music in return. And uh, I want you couchers to, like, if you have an open mind, give newer bands a chance. Uh, if you think uh, pro there's new, no new progressive rock that's worth your time, Chasing Cynics, Epochs Changing, and this is a pretty cool artwork because it shows like, like how you're struggling and then it goes down and you're better at the end. So the positive message is even in the album artwork. So this album drops this Friday, uh, the 22nd of November. So uh, I wanted to talk about it before because I know that obviously tomorrow uh, there's a new Opeth record, which I will review on the channel. So I want to know from you, Couchers, what do you think of Chasing Cynips? Epochs Changing. If you haven't heard of this band, give them a try and also watch the interview that I had with Carl somewhere around here so you can know more about this record. So until next time, Couchers, this is Hector, the shield dude on a couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.